Before we jump in and work with Squarespace, if you head over to the Squarespace blog, newsroom.squarespace.com, you can see that they've created a advertisement for the new feature that will just show you what it can do. My job today is to tell you how that's going to be different to the original editor in Squarespace 7.1, where you might find it more frustrating or where you might find it really unlocks your creativity. So we can see from this video here that all of a sudden it is looking a lot more fluid. There's a lot more freedom in how we can set up the website. That is a double-edged sword. Okay, so we're going to jump into Squarespace. I've got a website page open. This is Squarespace 7.1. It's empty at the moment. I've created a brand new page. So what we're going to do in this chapter of this mini course is to show you a Squarespace 7.1 section, which uses the Fluid Engine, and another section that doesn't. So if I click Add Section, we've got a lot of Fluid templates to work with, and Squarespace are really pushing this at the moment. If we scroll to the bottom, we can see Classic Editor. But we have lost the use of templates with the Classic Editor. So that's the first hint that Squarespace are going to be nudging you across to this new Fluid Editor from the start. But you can add a classic editor feature. So I've got a shortcut set up to add some Latin placeholder text, and I'm going to add in two paragraphs. Helps if I type the shortcut properly. There we go. What I'm also going to do is just so we can separate the two and differentiate them, is I'm going to change the background color to light one. This is the standard Squarespace editor. And if we edit the section, we've got a lot of options there. But as you can see, there's not a lot we can do here. So basically it's saying for full control, upgrade, or just keep it extremely simple as shown here. Before I jump in any further, I thought I'd just outline that as of the 21st of July 2022, you can still use the original editor on Squarespace 7.1 sites that you've built previously, whilst brand new websites will automatically be up and running with the Fluid Engine, whether you like it or not. Again, they're nudging you to push over to the new version. If you resist that, you still have Squarespace as it was. But I think the the lesson we can take from here is that we will all be using the Fluid Engine if, of course, we stick with Squarespace in the near future. And I wouldn't be surprised if that option of working with the old editor is phased out over the coming months. So let's have a look at creating a blank section using the Fluid Editor. And then we can see the differences we have. So here we've got the option to upgrade and not an awful lot else. Whilst here, we can add blocks as we want to. So I'm going to add a text block. And all of a sudden, we're looking at something very different. So now it's no longer filling the text block, the content area. So I'm going to put some placeholder text in, same as I did before, same amount as well. OK, so now we can see large discrepancy between the two already. We can set the object to align vertically, centrally to the block. So pin it to the middle or to the bottom. Now, that didn't change a lot. That's mainly because of the margin set on here. And if there was content that was longer elsewhere, then that would make a difference. So let's cut that text out from there. Add another text block. And look at what it's done there already. It's overlapped it on top of the other text block. So this is going to wind some people up. This is going to be heaven to others. It really depends on your disposition towards this type of feature. Say, for example, I've got this text block now. I can indeed overlap them. Not the best from design practice. But again, when we start bringing images into the fold, we can start working with that. What we can see here is even though we can move things with a lot of freedom. They're still jumping to various snap points here. So 
if I wanted this text block above this, no longer do I need to add spaces in. There used to be spaces in here. Now it's all about just positioning things as and where you want them to be. So if I wanted to move this down, have an image starting here with this text going above it, let's see how we can do that. So I add an image. Again, everything seems to be jumping to this left hand side. I can then set the height so I can move it a little bit and it will snap to the various snapping points. Now I'm going to add an image, browse stock library. Let's put this one in. Okay. So we can see here now that this image is in place. If I double click on it, we'll see if we can get it to scale to fit. Should I say fill the container? So it's cropped there. And we've got what I would call a magazine style layout. So we can start moving things around and keep consistent spacing. So far, so good. Let's just see how this now works in mobile view. We'll wait another minute. But I can hear the CPU fan on the computer going crazy at the moment. So it appears that it's putting a lot of load on the computer. So we don't have to start again. Okay, so there seems to be a bit of a teething issue here, maybe something with Chrome. I'll have to check that out later, but we can see now that it's actually working quite well on mobile. So if we wanted to move this position of this image on mobile view only, what's going to happen now with the desktop mode? I'm really interested to see. So we can see already that it's overlapping the text. And now we can see if we have any option in the design area. To fit, fill, or shape. No, there doesn't seem to be anything to go from snap mode to off with that. So what we're going to have to do is just move that text block down manually on mobile. So what I'm really interested in now is seeing when I jump back to desktop, has it reorientated? Or do we now have standalone editors in Squarespace for mobile? And that is identical to how it was on desktop before. Apart from the load time for the mobile view, which almost set my computer off into the air, there's a lot to be very positive about the Fluid Engine. But I repeat, the fact that we're being pushed over to this feature is going to jar with a number of our clients who have got used to the blue line, blue boxes approach that were, was integrated just over 12 months ago. And having been used to that now, having another change again, could be a little bit too much too soon. But I believe our designers are going to love it. And, and dare I say, it brings it far more in line with the likes of Wix. So we've lost that scaffolding grid light -like structure. If I was to put a summary block in, we can see now that there's an overlap effect in place so we can manipulate elements individually. Another feature that we could probably add here. So if I click hold and move this element down, I could probably take it right the way to the edge of the screen on one side, but not the other. So it used to be that we used to be able to set our widths and everything within the sections. But now we have a simple fill screen toggle. So next up, we're going to go into a little bit more depth in working with summary blocks and seeing what we can do to create quite different and intuitive effects with that. We're going to ditch the classic editor because all it offers us is a text block and some edit section options. My recommendation would be have a play and see how you get on and we'll catch you in the next chapter. Cheers.